feature Stowe's words and actions impacted the world, and although she published more than 30 books, it was her best-selling novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, that changed how Americans viewed slavery. Now, the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center uses Stowe's life and work to inspire others. Joining me now from the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center is Elizabeth Burgess, the collections manager, and Brian Co-Francesco, the program coordinator. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Thanks you. for bringing all these artifacts with you. Sure. Tough to transport, right? Just a little. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about the center? Sure. Uh, the, we opened up in 1968 as one of the very first house museums in this country focused on a woman. And so we've continued that over the past nearly 50 years, or over 50 years at this point. And uh, our main attraction being the Harry Beecher Stowe House, where we take visitors from across the world through to learn about Stowe's life. Uh, we also offer school programs and special programs and a lot of joint activities with our neighbors, the Mark Twain House. I think it was sixth grade I was up there for a class field trip. <laughs> yeah. Could it have been? Very possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, why don't you tell us a little bit about Harriet Beecher Stowe, her life? Sure. Well, uh, as you may know, she is Connecticut's first lady of literature. She's born in Litchfield, so she's a nutmegger uh, from the beginning, and she was one of 11 children born to, born to Lyman Beecher, and um, which uh, he was the father to so-called more brains than anyone else in America. So a very forward-thinking family, kind of like the Kennedys, but of the 19th century. Um, they had their hands in, in a little bit of everything okay. uh, around society, and Harriet uh, decided she would write because it was one of the only ways um, a woman could have a voice at, during her lifetime. Now, at what point did she write Uncle Tom's Cabin? She was living in Cincinnati at the time, 40 years old. Okay. Uh, she was, at that time, she had had six children. Uh, she was the wife of a minister and a professor. <laughs> and she really, as Beth mentioned, was looking for a way to have her voice heard. Mm -hmm. And so she started writing Uncle Tom's Cabin as a serial in a newspaper. So she was oh. expecting to have a weekly installment with a new chapter, kind of like today's comic strips. Um, and that initial four weeks of installments turned into almost a year. And so in 1852, it was finally published as a two-volume book. And, and it that's made quite a, an impact. Quite yeah, an did. impact, yeah. Great. All right, well, tell us what you have here. Sure. You want to start over here? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so this piece is a very new acquisition. Uh, we acquired this actually about two weeks ago. This is a piece of wallpaper depicting scenes from Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uh, we purchased it at an auction here in Connecticut, and it dates to 1853. So as I mentioned, uh, the book was published in 1852. It's only a year after. So you can oh. see the impact across the world uh, made in England. And so it's very interesting to think about the fact that somebody would make the conscious decision to put wallpaper in their house uh, depicting scenes wow, from such un a controversial book and such a controversial mm -hmm. topic as slavery. Okay, and what's this over here that I won't touch? <laughs> <laughs> well, this book uh, is an 1852 edition of Uncle Tom's Cabin, and it's English. And we brought this because this is really the closest source for some of these images that we can see. Mm -hmm. uh, this one being the scene of the slave girl Eliza crossing the Ohio River with her son Harry, uh, which is also depicted in the wallpaper. Okay, and um, the, the plate here? Mm -hmm. A plate uh, dates to the mid-1850s, probably 1855. I mean, it shows also a scene from uh, this wallpaper of Eliza when she learns her son Harry is to be sold at auction. And uh, again, it shows some of the commercialization with Uncle Tom's Cabin. How sure. Just like today, you can buy action figures and lunch boxes. You could buy different things for your home or for your personal life that had characters from Uncle Tom's Cabin. But Harry Peter Stern never really played into any of that, right? No, she didn't. Right. She. Um, it was before copyright laws. Okay. So um, she really had no royalties from any of this, and it just took off mm -hmm. like a shot because it was really the most second most popular book published in the entire century, um, second only to the Bible wow. in sales. So it's pretty forward thinking. Um, everyone knew about it. There were stage productions uh, produced about it. So it was just everywhere. So like Brian was saying, you could buy handkerchiefs, okay. wallpaper, everything. All right, and what are we looking at here? This is one of Harry Beecher Stowe's very own inkwells. Oh. So as an author, it's one of uh, the things we really like to show within our collection, and it does, uh, it is on exhibit in the house, so you could see it. Um, and you know, she just that was her way of, of communicating sure. and, and making her life, uh, making a career. So it's very poignant for us. All right. It dates to about the 1860s or so. Wow. This is um, a petition page, a signature page. So as you can see, signatures um, against the idea of slavery. So these are from all women in Great Britain. Over half a million women signed this petition. It fills 26 volumes, about five inches thick. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and they were presented to her when she showed up there in 1853 uh, on a trip. And how did you obtain all of these? 
you know, it, a variety of ways, okay. like through auction, the wallpaper, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it comes down through family. There are descendants, um, and our founder, uh, who was a, a relation as well, collected it from her other family members. So I see. Yeah. And the two books on the end? The two books on the end are uh, international editions of Uncle Tom's Cabin. So okay. this is an 1897 Swedish edition, and then over here is a very recent Japanese edition. Okay, Brian, why don't you just tell our viewers at home um, some of the activities that could that you could check out at the Harriet Beecher Stowe Center. Our, our iconic uh, activity that we do is what we call Salons at Stowe. And oh. so as you mentioned, we use Stowe's words to inspire change in the world uh, and social justice issues. And so our salons are community discussions, all open to the public and free, where we talk about difficult issues. Uh, we make it a safe haven to talk about race relations, education gaps, human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And we also have a very big school program mm -hmm. uh, where we have people from all across the country who are coming here. And what we find most poignant is that 10% of our visitors are international. Huh? So we can still see today, in addition to everything here, that mm -hmm. she's continuing to have a global impact. That's true. Very good. And it's yeah. uh, easily located in Hartford. It's uh, an asylum, correct? Right. Down um, Farmington and then take her right onto Forest. Very good. <laughs> all right. Uh, we are just out of time. Thank you so much for bringing all this stuff. It was really fascinating. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. All right. Stay with us. More Connecticut style after the break. And of course, you can find the info over at WTNH.com. And we'll be right back. <laughs> this is pretty cool.